Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about something that we Android developers need to do very often and there are lots of discussions going around this topic. And what encouraged me to make this video was this blog article here from Jay Wong. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Shout out at this point. Um, it's a great blog. I will also link it below this video. But I followed the discussions about this article on X a little bit and also read it myself of course. And it's all about how loading initial data on Android should happen. So it's a very common thing. We might display a list of items on a screen, which we first of all have to load from our local database, which we have to load from a remote API, for example. And the place where loading this initial data, so where we trigger loading that, the place where this should happen is everything but obvious. So in this video, I will go over the three main ways that we have for loading initial data, talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each approach, and then of course also tell you what you should now do. And I can already tell you, after reading this article, my approach for that also changed. And just before we get started, in only eight days, the next 10-week round of my Android mentorship program will start, which might be the last round of this year. So if you want to work together with me and my team very closely over the next 10 weeks, then you'll have the chance to do a last minute application by clicking the link down below. So to get back what this video is actually about, it's about loading initial data. And let's first of all talk about the two most common ways how people do this in Android. And that is on the one hand from a launched effect block. So from a Jetpack Compose effect handler that just fires exactly once, when that launched effect block enters the composition. So here in this little sample view model, I've just prepared a loading state flow. And when we load our data, so this function really triggers in this initial data loading, then we switch this to true, simulate some kind of network call, for example, that loads the data and then switch it back to false. So if we go to our activity, where we actually observe this is loading state here, we just listen to it with collect as state with life cycle. Now the big question is, from where do we trigger this function? Now, as I said, the first common approach is from launched effect. So what we can do, of course, is we can go to our Compose UI where we have access to our view model, say the key is true, so it's just a, a static key that will never change. And therefore the code here inside of this launched effect block will also only execute once when this launched effect block enters our um, composition. And in here we can then say view model load data. If we then launch this, by the way, I've also added a print line statement here so we can actually also um, check when data is loaded. Then you can see after the progress indicator was hidden, we see everything loaded. If we take a look in Logcat, then we can also see that loading data was obviously initiated. So what is good and what is bad about this approach? The good thing is that we fully control when loading data should happen. So a standalone view model instance here would not load any data until we tell it to do so. This is especially helpful for testing. I've also prepared a little test case because this will play a major role for this video. I mean, if we take a look here in our test source set, here in our my view model test. Now this is how a typical test setup could look like when you test a view model. You have a public field here, or not a public field, but a global field that is then initialized in this setup function, which is simply triggered before every single test case. So crucial concept of when it comes to testing is that objects are just initialized or reinitialized before every single test case, because we really want to start off with a completely fresh state. We don't want to shear specific instances across test cases, because if then one test case mutates some kind of internal state of that instance and another test case uses that, then it could be that the test case fails because another test case mutated that state, but not because our code is actually broken. And that is why we want to definitely reinitialize our instances uh, that we test before every single test case. And if we now trigger loading initial data from our activity, from our uh, launched effect block here, then in our test case, we can also do this at any point in the test. So if we then have some kind of test case here, function, test something or so, then if we want to uh, trigger loading data on the test case, we could just go ahead and save your model, load data, and then have our uh, assertions, whatever kind of thing we want to assert. So that's the good part about doing it with a launched effect. However, it also comes with a disadvantage. And that is if we open our device again and we rotate it, for example, you can see loading data happens again. So that means if there is a configuration change, so if the device is rotated, if you're switching your device theme, if you're switching the language of the device, then loading data will happen again. Because when there is a configuration change, the activity is recreated. That is a one major point where we have view models in the first place, since these outlive configuration changes, but the activity doesn't. And therefore new content is drawn on our screen. Everything in here is recomposed or not recomposed, but actually it enters the new composition for the first time. And then loading data will just trigger again. But the thing is, if we loaded some data from a remote API and we already have that data loaded on our device, then there is no real reason that we refetch that data when there's a configuration change. Because after the configuration, 
configuration change, the data will be the same as it was before. So that is an unnecessary database call or network request. And that is why most people, including me up to this point, did this differently. Instead of launch defect, we went ahead and in our view model, we simply used our init block. So when the view model is initialized, when the, the instance is created, we trigger a loading data. If we now uh, change this back and then also relaunch this and then take a look here, then we also see our progress indicator, then everything is loaded. And if we now rotate the device, you can see everything stays loaded so we don't reload everything. And this is how I always did it because the view models init block is in fact the only real place that is only called exactly once per screen. So this definitely comes with the advantage that loading data really only happens once per screen and isn't refetched on a configuration change. However, this also comes with a disadvantage that I so far accepted, but the article that I've mentioned convinced me of a better approach. And the disadvantage is testing again. So if you want to test our view model and Loading that initial data happens in the init block. So as soon as the view model is created, well, then we lose control over that in our test case, because typically you want to initialize our instances here in setup, as I said, but the moment we do this, we already load initial data. So that's kind of a side effect that is coupled to the object creation of the view model. And in many cases, this will be just fine. In many cases, you just want to trigger loading data when you create this view model instance, but sometimes you don't want to. And now imagine we want to have a certain test setup. So doing something in our test case before we load that initial data, Data, but after initializing our review model, then that's not possible anymore because we have to initialize our review model in order to load this initial data. So there are definitely scenarios where testing this is quite difficult if you initialize your uh, data here in the um, init block of the view model. But I always thought this was the only real way to do this and uh, doing it with a launched effect um, had too many drawbacks or at least the drawback with the configuration change was too big for me to stick to this. So for that, the drawback that this approach has with the um, testing that certain test cases are just harder seems smaller for me. But the article also highlighted a third approach that comes from Iron Lake, also shout out at this point, so from a Googler and it uses flow collection. And it's an approach that I never really considered and thought about, but when reading it, it makes absolute sense. So if we don't want to couple loading initial data to our activity lifecycle, so when we have this launch defect block here, but also not to our review model lifecycle, then there is a third way that we couple it to our flow collection lifecycle. And the way this works is this. We remove this init block, so we don't want to load this in uh, the view model init anymore. And here, where we take this uh, loading state flow, or this uh, mutable state flow, and convert it to an immutable state flow, we want to do something in between. What we want to do is, we want to call on start, which is the uh, flow lifecycle operator that is triggered when collection starts on this flow. So as soon as the uh, collector appears here in the UI, then this on start block will be fired once. In here, we can load our data now. And you can see uh, since all these flow operators just return a normal flow, but we want a state flow. So a flow um, that really caches the result, and that's also a hot flow. So multiple collectors just get the most recent value in this case, the most recent cached value. And if we have a normal flow returned by this on start operator and we want to convert it back to a state flow, we can't use this one here, but rather the state in operator. So with a state in, we can say, okay, this is actually um, using your model scope here to cache the result. And then the interesting part is now the sharing started, um, where we will use sharing started at a while subscribed with five seconds. And I will explain this in a moment, but let's, let's um, pass the initial value as a last parameter, which is false. So initially we're not loading. And let's now launch this again. There we go. We are loading the initial data immediately because the um, UI actually subscribed to this flow with collect as state with lifecycle. If we subscribe to this flow, this will trigger the on start operator since collection just started and let's now rotate the device because that's the interesting part you can see everything stays loaded so even though the flow is actually recollected because when we rotate our device that's a configuration change the activity is recreated and therefore the new composition will again collect this flow um, with this lifecycle function. So there are actually two independent collectors appearing here, yet this on start function is only called once. And the reason behind this is this while subscribed. So the most common timeout value that is used for this while subscribed is just five seconds. So what this strategy, the sharing started strategy will do is it will keep on caching the result of this flow. So the value of our current is loading state for five more seconds if the last collector disappeared. And since recreating the activity is faster than five seconds, the new collector that appears when the activity was recreated will just get the last result from this is loading again and therefore um, this on start operator will also not be recalled. If we would remove this timeout millis here and we would just immediately stop caching the is loading state here if the last uh, collector of this disappears, if we then take a look, let's first of all rotate again and we again load our initial data. If we now rotate this, we will load this again 
because there is not this uh, this timeout anymore. And since there is a tiny gap where there is no collector of this flow, the next collector that appears after the activity was recreated will again trigger a completely fresh collection of this flow. That is why it's so important to pass five seconds here. So once the last collector of this flow disappears, this flow will wait five more seconds. And if after these five seconds, there is still no collector, then collection will stop and the on start operator will be called again when then there is a new collector. And we can also easily test this and verify this by loading this again. Everything will be loaded here. And if we now minimize the app for more than five seconds and we then go back, click in here, you will notice that now reloading data happens again. That didn't happen if we do this in the init block of the view model, but this way we're doing this because the moment we actually minimize our app, flow collection um, stops because we use collect as state with a life cycle. And therefore, while our app is minimized, there is no flow collector for more than five seconds. But I would actually say that this is desired because if the user minimizes the app and then maybe comes back 10 minutes later, there might be completely different data when you load this data again from the remote endpoint or from your local database. So this I absolutely don't see as a downside. But let's now think about the last aspect here when it comes to testing with this approach. Because that way, we don't have the disadvantage anymore that loading initial data is coupled to the creation and initialization of the view model. And since loading data now just happens when flow collection starts, we can of course control this in our test case. So instead of calling load data here, we would just do something that uh, collects the, the is loading state flow in our case. So for example, uh, we use run test here. Okay, you don't have the dependency. Let's use run blocking. And then we can do something like view model is loading to list or so. We could actually um, cache all these emissions in the list. At the moment, we use some kind of terminal operator or obviously just um, collect. Then there is suddenly a flow collector, which will also trigger uh, loading initial data. So we now again have this full control in our test case, but we don't have to couple loading initial data to the life cycle of our activity with a launch defect. So I must say this approach convinced me. That is why I will also keep on using that in the next videos. Thanks so much for everyone involved in the article. It was uh, really interesting. Again, I will link it down below, just like the uh, link from my mentorship application. So feel free to apply and maybe we're already working together in just a week from now. Thank you. See you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.